Hey guys, we are in the basement. Today we're gonna do part three of the Gyrus Restore. In today's video, we're gonna cover some pretty basic things like stripping metal and painting it, replacing the ground plug, and also we're gonna start patching up and filling in the extra holes that are in the front of the cabinet. And also, before we go to the garage, I wanna show you guys something here. Because Qbert is working. And you wanna know something? I didn't do too much to get him working. What I found out, and this is very strange, is that when Qbert is plugged in with the other games on the same circuit is when it freaks out. I found out that if I plug Qbert into another outlet that is not part of the arcade circuit, Qbert works flawlessly. I did some tests, I measured the voltage. The voltage in the basement here when all the games are on, on those circuits, I'm getting around 110 to 114 volts, okay? If I plug him into another outlet that's not on the basement circuit, that, that outlet is running a little bit higher because it has a, less of a load. There's not 30-something games running. That outlet is around 117, 120. If I plug Qbert into that outlet over here, he, he runs fine. Nothing wrong with him. Game runs perfect. So what I did is I had this line conditioner here. I set it to 127 volts and I plugged it into the arcade. And so right now, Qbert is getting a steady 127 volts. Now I know that's high, but I don't think it's too high. And anyway, the game is working fine now, and I don't know what to make of this, because I, I would prefer not to be doing this right now with the line conditioner, but for whatever reason, if, if, if I give him less than 115 volts is when he starts freaking out. Anything over that, the game runs fine. I've replaced the bridge rectifier, I replaced the filter, the, uh, the filter cap, both, all those items on the uh, power supply, uh, the transformer assembly. So I don't know what's going on here. I, I might have something wrong with my power supply. It could be something related to the 12 volts that's coming from the bridge rectifier. But that, again, I replaced. So I don't know if any, anyone has any ideas why Qbert will not work at 114 volts, but will work at 117 or 120 or 127. So. All right, guys, let's go out to the garage and let's talk about Gyrus. And then after we talk about Gyrus, I'm going to show you guys something really cool. So make sure you stick around after we leave the garage. So let's go back to the garage and look at Gyrus. Okay, here is where Gyrus stands. Um, now, since the last video, I have removed all of the contact paper and... Uh, it wasn't really hard to do at all, it just took a little bit of time. And I've also been cleaning this thing up with uh, some simple green and some paper towels. But uh, I think the game's looking actually pretty damn good. Uh, the side art is actually not bad at all, man. Once I got the contact paper was off, um, it actually revealed some pretty good looking side art. Um, I mean, there is a lot of scratches in it that I'm going to uh, touch up with some paint. Um, but it's it's really coming along here. Um, the next thing, actually, you know what I did do, <laughs> which I did not film, is I replaced the tube. Um, there is a new tube in here. My buddy Pete came over last night. We had some, I actually had a little party here, and uh, he brought over a tube from, for, for me, and uh, I didn't. we didn't film it. <laughs> so here it is. Uh, there's a new tube in here. There's no more gyrus burn. Um, this tube actually was not from an old television set, which is what we were going to do. Uh, my friend Pete had an old tube from like a Robotron, and that's what we put in here. And so there wasn't really too much work. Um, Pete did some work adjusting the yoke and all that to make sure the picture was nice and square and stuff. Um, I don't think the con anything was done with the convergence, but it actually went pretty smoothly. So thanks, Pete, uh, for helping me doing that. Um, here's the old tube right here that we pulled out. Um, and uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with this old tube. We actually might have fun with this in a video. Um, I'm thinking about bringing this over to my buddy's house and shooting it. <laughs> so we, we might be doing that in a video coming up here. I don't know when, maybe in a week or two, but I'm going to keep this around. Uh, um, cause this, this thing is just shot. It's got so much gyrus burn. But anyway, today what we're going to be doing is actually kind of not really that exciting, but it's something I need to do. So now that I got the monitor all squared away, the game works fine. Um, it, it, uh, I've been cleaning it up. It's, it's definitely looking pretty good. Now I'm going to start addressing some of the cosmetic issues. Uh, 
I need to basically get these metal pieces off. Um, there's two pieces of metal, one here and one on the top. Um, the top one I already took off, and you can see it's just all rusted. And uh, we're gonna sand this and paint it. And, uh, and also what we're gonna do, I went to the hardware store and I got some dowel rods. Okay, and these are, this is a half inch dowel rod. Um, because somebody drilled two extra holes in the front here of the cabinet. Um, so this hole right here and that hole right there are not supposed to be there. So we're gonna plug those up and then bond with them. And today we're gonna do the plugging and then in the following uh, uh, video will do the bondoing uh, but what I did is I went to the hardware store and I got a half inch dowel and I cut it and we're gonna basically put these in these holes and glue them in there and uh, and then I'm gonna take bondo and go over that and uh, to make it nice and smooth and then we're gonna paint the whole thing black in the front so that's gonna actually work out pretty well you can see that really fills the hole nicely so for whatever reason I don't know why you, you get these games and there's all these extra holes in them I just you never understand what I don't know if they had a lock bar um, installed in the front at some point or what, but uh, so we're going to do that. Um, so why don't I actually go ahead and get the glue out and we'll just glue those in real quick. Okay, so uh, what I'm actually going to do here because my uh, my glue um, is a little, the, the cap thing was all dried up. Uh, this is kind of old glue, but I'm just going to take a screwdriver and uh, I'm just going to put some of this glue in this hole. I'm not really that worried about how this looks because this is all going to be sanded off. Uh, I'm just going to put some glue on this doll and we're just going to stick it in there and let it dry. And uh, and if we, I mean we could try filling this hole up with Bondo but usually it'll, it'll just kind of cave in on itself so this is a really good idea to do uh, to just kind of plug the hole with some wood and uh, yeah I'm making a mess here but I'm not that concerned about it okay so that's on there and then let's go do the other one yes I know it's ugly and then we're gonna do the same thing over here let me pull the doll out but we're gonna sand this whole thing down and we're gonna paint it so I'm not too concerned about making a mess right now But this type of woodworking, I'm not really an expert at this, but I, I tend to I tend to get through it. Um, this kind of stuff shouldn't really scare you. This is all pretty much common sense type things. Um, let's put some more glue in there. wipe the excess off the front again we're gonna sand this all down I'm trying to get it as flush to the front as I can but yeah that doesn't look very attractive does it but it's it's just it's just Elmer's wood wood glue it's, it's water-based it comes off easy if I need to get it off um, so we're gonna let that dry and then uh, in the next video we'll get we're gonna bondo that and smooth it out all right, let's move on to the metal pieces. Okay, so now I want to get the metal uh, trim off. There's actually a, a marquee um, kind of metal retainer up here that's all rusted that we're going to sand. This one was held on with just three screws. They were uh, Phillips head screws. However, uh, this piece of metal, which um, holds the, uh, the plexi on, um, is secured onto this with some security screws. If you can see that right there. And it's very common to find um, security screws on all these trim pieces because they didn't want people stealing the marquees or getting into the game. So they would put these security screws on. Now, I've actually never encountered this type. Um, look at that. It, it has like two little circles. But I do have a, a security bit set. And this is something that you probably should have um, if you're going to be collecting arcade games because... 
you will encounter these security screws and this little bit set basically has all the different security type uh, bits on it and uh, I got this kit on eBay I, I think for like 10 bucks or something uh, actually I purchased a few of these because I, I keep losing the bits and stuff but they're cheap enough and they're great to have on hand but I think that this guy here is what I need to get those screws off and let's see if that works um, hopefully one of these is going to be the right one that one almost fits in there not quite though let's see is there one just a little bit smaller um, let's try this one I mean I sure hope this fits because if I can't get this off alright that fits perfect okay so there's the right bit for that so let's put this in my little electric screwdriver and let's get this piece of metal off Okay, so I installed it in my little electric screwdriver, which I love. And uh, so let's go ahead and get these off. And it looks like these have never been removed, I don't think. And when I replace these, I'm probably just going to put normal screws in here. Because I actually find these security bits to be annoying. I probably should... There we go. Come over here and get this one. God. This is an ugly God this connection here. Get in there. All right, we got one out. And let's get the other. Can't believe how rusted this metal got. Okay, so we have removed this. Um, I probably will save these old screws just so I can match them up when I go to this hardware store. Um, I love going to Ace to buy replacement screws because they got those bins um, with all the different size, you know, machine screws and everything. And you pay a little more for it, but it's just so easy to go there with screws and just go in the part, the, the drawer. And look at that thing was bent. Interesting. So, um, and then what I usually do is I, I save all my screws and stuff in, in a Ziploc bag as I'm working. And so, I'm going to throw this in my bag here. Really nice to have a Ziploc bag on hand when you're doing this. Okay, so now we have these two ugly pieces of metal um, that we're going to need to sand and straighten out. Now this one, I think I'm going to take a hammer to this and just straighten it out because it's all bent. Um, so why don't I go ahead and do that real quick. Okay, let me just show you here. So I just took a hammer to this. All I did was I laid it flat like so, and uh, I just beat the living piss out of it with a hammer, and it totally flattened out. So it looks like when this thing was on there, someone was pulling on it like this, and it, it bent it. Um, but just, you just take hammer to the stuff and, and straighten it out. And uh, that looks actually pretty good. Okay, so now let's talk about sanding. Um, what I use when I sand these, and you really, you, what you want to do is you want to sand all the rust off these metal pieces. And it's common for them to have some rust. These are very rusted though. Um, and what I do is I have a, a little palm sander right here. Um, I, you can get these fairly inexpensively. I, I bought this like 10 years ago for like 50 bucks or something. And I'm using a pretty coarse uh, sandpaper on here. This is 40 grit. Um, and then I'm going to finish it off with like 100 to 150, but this is really coarse. Um, and this is good for stripping and, and getting all this just chunky stuff off of here. And uh, so let, why don't I plug this in and let's do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this piece of metal and I'm going to put it on the end of my table here. And this is a table I don't necessarily care about. The, I decide to use this for working, but you don't want to do this on a nice table because um, the sander is going to hit it. So... <laughs> Ah. 
So you can see it's it's definitely taking everything off here and it's getting nice and smooth. So why don't I continue doing this and I'll be right back. Okay, we are done. <laughs> Definitely not that fun, but uh, you know, this looks pretty good, right? It's not perfect, um, but you know what? Once we paint it, it's gonna cover all this up. Um, I got pretty much all the rust off of it. There's maybe some minor little smidgens of it just kind of pitted in the metal. Um, not too worried about it, but uh, this is pretty much ready for painting now. And uh, so why don't we go ahead and, and set up some newspaper and we'll hit this with some primer. And I'll be right back. Okay, so I pulled out some uh, some cardboard from the garbage here. And uh, so we're just going to hit this stuff with uh, some primer. And what I'm using, this I bought this at Ace Hardware. Uh, this is Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch. Ultra Cover 2 times primer, and it's just black primer. And we're going to hit it with this first, and then we're going to hit it with um, uh, some regular paint afterwards. So why don't we go ahead and put the uh, primer on first. And, you know, this is painting. I'm sure you guys have all done this at some point. And I tend to put a lot of coats on this stuff. But we're just going to put in a nice first coat here, real light, and then let this uh, then come back in here within an hour and hit it with uh, some paint. So this is primer. There we go. And we'll let that dry. It says on the can, uh, hang on a second. Do, 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 do. It says on the can here that uh, you're supposed to um, recoat it within an hour, I think, um, or wait 24 hours. Um, so, okay, anyway, we got primer on that. And then after that dries, I'm going to go ahead and hit it with this. I never used this before, but this is a uh, lacquer, high luster coating, factory-like finish on wood, metal, and more ultra smooth. So we're going to try this. Um, now, the thing I, I don't like is very high gloss stuff. So this is a... I think a semi-gloss black. If it's not, I might hit it with a satin over it because I, I hate super freakishly shiny spray-painted metal. It just looks really cheesy to me. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, that that is redoing the metal um, primer and then paint, let it dry, sand, get it off, straighten it out. Um, pretty straightforward stuff, really. Um, and then the other thing we're going to do in today's video is kind of a, a correct a pet peeve of mine <laughs> for whatever reason <laughs> all these all these games I buy seem to always be missing the goddamn ground plug and it just makes me mad and so I always um, replace this plug and I go to uh, Home Depot and uh, and I buy a replacement plug like this and it's pretty easy to put on so why don't we go ahead and do that real quick and uh, I'll be right back Okay, so replacing the plug is actually pretty simple to do. Um, what you want to do is cut the old plug off, and this is going to be the scariest part of the whole thing because there's no turning back after you do this. <laughs> That's it. You've just committed to it. So, um, And then you look in here, and there's going to be three wires. Uh, there's black, white, and green. Um, so green is our ground. And so what we're going to do here now is um, we need to strip back some of this uh, shielding and I do this with my uh, with my little f uh, flush cutters, and I'm just gonna trim back this, and I don't want to cut the wire when I do it. And we're basically just trying to get it so that the three wires are separated. But this is a really easy thing to do, and um, it just bothers me when the ground plug is missing. Um, 
because I, I guess you could say it's not the game's not safe, right? Um, because it doesn't have a proper ground. So if something were to short, um, it's got nowhere to go with the electricity. And uh, I don't know if missing the ground plug can can cause a game to act strange or whatever, but uh, I suppose it's possible. <sighs> But you can buy these plugs for like a couple bucks. All right, so we've got our three wires there. And I'm going to go ahead and strip them back with my little strippers. I think. Okay, so we've got our three wires and they're all stripped. And now we're going to take our new plug and this style here, um, basically there's three screws on this side. And so we get to loosen these up. And, and then we're going to be able to remove... I tend to always buy this kind, I don't know why. And then you take this off. Um, so we're going to put this right here for now. And then... Um, the first thing you want to do though, and this is important, the first thing you want to do is feed your uh, cord through this before you attach it to this. Otherwise, you can't put it back together. And so we're going to loosen these up. And we're going to feed our... Uh... Now, I know this is probably very basic what I'm doing here for a lot of, for, to a lot of you guys out there, but I happen to know that this is a real question because... Uh, I've seen people ask this question before, you know, do I need to replace the whole plug, you know? Um, no, you don't. You can just replace uh, the, the, the people think that you need to replace the entire cord um, to fix this issue, and you don't. You can just replace the plug. Okay, so now we need to put these on here, and um, what's nice, though, is that ground green is color-coded inside here, so it's a green screw, and then the other two... Um, are not labeled and it's not doesn't really matter how you put them on so black and white go on here and then the green goes on green so let's go ahead and make our ground connection first so we're just going to stick that right in there and then tighten it down okay and so now let's go ahead and make our uh, our black and white These things are very easy to work with. It's a good design. Hopefully I have enough wire here. All right, let's get the white one down. All right, so let's get the black one. Just like so. All right, so there you go. You can see we've got our our green going to the green ground screw. And I'm just going to make sure that's tight. And white and black go to the other two screws. And we're done. So now we have to put it together. And we're just going to slide this down. And now this is where it gets a little tricky here, but you got to line up these screws to the uh, threads on the inside. It's not hard, it's just can, can be a pain sometimes to get it to line up. See, I don't think I'm lined up. I'm not. That looks pretty good. Uh, I don't want to strip these screws. Ah. Uh. Hmm. 
Hang on a second. Okay, actually, there's one thing I want to point out here. Um, if you look inside here, there's a little spring right there. You got to make sure that the ground, that tab, touches that spring, okay? That's the correct orientation for this. Okay, I got them in as far as they can go. They're they're really hard to put on. So, and then the other side here, you want to make this little seal. Um, this piece of rubber goes in here, and then you're going to tighten these screws down. Which is, um, I, I guess, the purpose of this is probably so water can't get in here. And just push this in all the way, and then just tighten this down. All right, so that's it. Pretty simple and straightforward. So now we want to test it, make sure we didn't do anything wrong. And uh, so let's go ahead and plug this in and make sure the game still works. All right, this is it. And I hear power. So let's go in front here, the monitor's warming up. And we've got <laughs> So yeah, that's it. Not much to it. So that's it guys. Um, I know this, uh, app, this uh, video probably wasn't the most exciting, but this is all stuff that you gotta do um, to restore a game. Um, so we, we plugged some holes. Uh, that's actually drying pretty nice there. Um, we stripped and painted uh, some the metal trim parts, and we replaced the cord. So that's it, guys. That is it for part three of the Gyrus Restore. Why don't we go back down to the basement? All right, so before we go in the basement, I want to show you guys something. Check this out. Huh. Why don't we put a quarter in? So yeah, this is out there. And now it's here. It's uh, it's okay. It's uh, It gets a tad boring, to be honest. pretty damn hard to be honest all right there you have it let's go to the basement all right guys there you have it that was uh, the third installment of the gyrus restore and I hope you guys are enjoying that and by the way there is a playlist for that so um, if you go on youtube.com slash blk dog7 um, there's going to be a separate playlist for the Gyrus video, so they'll be all in one spot, and then hopefully when, when they're all done, you can watch them from beginning to end and kind of see how the transformation took place. All right, guys, that's it for me. Um, thanks for subscribing to my little channel. If you've never done so, please click the subscribe buttons. I release new videos every Sunday and sometimes in between, and check out my podcast, Video Game Outsiders, at videogameoutsiders.com. All right, guys, see you later. Take care. Adios. Ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-ta-